Good evening and welcome to Thinking Thursday. I'm your host, Bronwyn Lucas, and I am so glad we are here again tonight. Let me get on the screen with you. So, I am so happy that you're here tonight, and we do have a guest tonight, and I will introduce my guest shortly. I will allow my guest actually a chance to introduce herself. Um, but as if you've been here before, you know we always begin with breathing before we do anything. And so for those of you who it's your first time here, let me tell you about breathing and why we do it. We're going to take three deep cleansing breaths. Why? When you do that, you allow oxygen to go into your brain and through your body. And when it does, it allows you the opportunity to relax. You may have had a stressful day. You may have had a peaceful day, but it allows you to kind of wash away some of the day and give you a chance to refocus. This is something you can do anytime you find yourself a little stressed out or a little something going on. Just breathe. So here's what I want you to do. You're going to breathe in through your nose slowly to the count of four as I count. And you'll breathe out slowly to the count of four through your mouth. So let's practice. Breathe in, two, three, four, out, two, three, four, in, two, three, four, out, two, three, four, in, two, three, four, out, two, three, four. Hopefully that allowed you to just have a woosa moment. I see uh, Reverend Angela smiling. Looks like you got your woosa moment there. I did. I love that. I love that. Taking time to just breathe. Just breathe. That's great. You know, we take breathing for granted, but it is so beneficial to just stop and breathe. So we always start the show with that moment. So I'm going to let Reverend Anderson, Raven Anderson, Introduce herself. Tell us all the great things we need to know. Well, first of all, let me say good evening. Good evening, Bronwyn, to you. And thank you so much for the invitation to join you and all your listeners and viewers this evening. Um, my name is Reverend Dr. Angela Raven Anderson, and I am a member of Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church, where I serve there as part of our clergy team. And of course, I serve as part of our social justice ministry there. Um, I am deeply honored uh, to serve alongside uh, Reverend Don Odom as the, the we are co-leads for this ministry and um, just super excited about what uh, we are doing um, as part of the mission of the church to minister to the total person. So I'm, I'm a native Texan. You said tell a little bit about me. Yes. I'm a native Texan. Yes. Where are you from? I grew up in the Dallas Fort Worth area and I could tell I've been in Houston a long time because when I was young, if you'd asked me, I would have just said I grew up in Fort Worth because people in Fort Worth are different than the people mm -hmm. in Dallas. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I've been down here in Houston so long now, I, I kind of say Dallas, I put it together just like the rest of the Houstonians down here. But I grew up in Fort Worth and, uh, but my husband and I, we've lived here uh, for uh, close to 30 something years. And um, I have a daughter who will be graduating. She's my, my, my tiger. She's graduating from LSU this summer. Awesome. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's just a little bit about me. <laughs> awesome. I know about that difference because I'm in the Dallas Fort Worth area and I'm in Arlington. Yeah. So, right, yeah, exactly. so, you know, that's a whole nother world. <laughs> so, yes, I am in Arlington. Uh, so I understand the difference. Amen. Amen. Um, for those of you who it may be your first time, let me tell you a little about the show and how social justice fits in with our platform. 
If you've never been here before, Thinking Thursday addresses life, all issues of life through a mental health lens. And it is my perspective that everything impacts our mental health. If we think about the events of 2020, social injustice was magnified. We saw Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, and if I began to name others, it would just, we could spend the whole 45 minutes and wouldn't even name all the names we could from the last just five years. But we know that injustice is just a problem for right. us. And so that impacts, even if it's not you, it can impact your well being for parents who have to have the talk with their child before they go out and their child who just doesn't get okay, yeah, mom. Uh huh, I hear you. And they can parrot it back, but you know it hasn't sunk in. And when that's true, you're a little worried. But just the fact that you have to have the talk. And if you don't know what I mean by the talk, that's another conversation we'll have to have. But that's that talk where you have to have with your Black child about going out. If you have a son, baby, you, I know you like your hoodie, but if you're outside, you can't be walking down the street with your hoodie on. Uh, Correct. Because they will wear a hoodie in the summer. So you can't wear your hoodie in the summer. You can keep it on, but put the, take the hood off your head. If you have on headphones, don't put them in your ears so you can always hear. If you're stopped by the police, and it goes on and on, there are things we have to say because of injustice. Well, this impacts your mental well-being as a parent. It impacts the mental well-being of a child. It can impact their self-esteem. It's, well, why do I have to think about this? Is there something wrong with me? Right, right. Which becomes yet another conversation. So tonight we're looking at, we're going to find out about a conference that is talking about social justice. It is put on by the Social Justice Ministry of Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. Um, but before we even talk about the conference, can you tell me, what do you mean by the term social justice? Social justice. Well, when we begin to think through, Brahman, about social justice, we be, what we're talking about, and even just the word justice, right? Justice is a, is a word that really, particularly from a biblical perspective, has to do with right relations between individuals. And so when we begin to talk about social justice, we're talking about what happens in our systems, right? In our various sphere, various spheres of our lives, how do we see um, people groups being treated? How are, are they being all treated equitably? Are they all being treated fairly? Well, we know in this country that is not the case. We know in this country that because of our history that we continue to carry forward, they, that there is um, uh, inequity, there is disparity, there's inequality in how those uh, black and brown bodies are treated in all of our systems, whether it be uh, criminal justice, education, uh, healthcare, it's experienced this, this, this disparity, and, and, we, and we talk about the injustice as being systemic injustice because it's, it, may be, it may not be um, the individual who puts on the hood and brandishes uh, you know, the swastika, but um, the, the way that the system is set up uh, puts, puts a particular people group at a disadvantage. And sometimes we don't even recognize how this has come uh, to be and how it's experienced and expressed. So within this particular ministry, we really try to focus on those issues that are related to systemic injustice and um, you know, I mentioned at Wheeler Avenue, our, 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 our mantra is that we minister to the total person. We know that God cares not only about us from a spiritual perspective, but God cares about every dimension in our life. God cares about our relationships. God cares about um, our um, financial status and our ability to prosper. Uh, God cares about um, whether we are embraced and um, part of, you know, we're, we're included and part of our family and social system. God cares about all of those things. So because of that, we recognize this work is really part of uh, a continuation of even the work of Jesus while he was here in the earth to seek justice. 
Awesome. And, you know, justice is something that is elu still eludes us as a people. When yes. you um, look at that, um, and you've kind of talked about how we define justice. So uh, why do you think it's important that the church, not just your church, but the church universal, why should the church care about social issues? Because there are some that say they, they're okay if the church doesn't deal with social issues. I'm not one of those, but um, what do you well, say to that? I think, unfortunately, especially here in America, there's kind of been this bifurcation, right, between um, e the evangelistic side of uh, our spiritual practices and the social side of our practices. Um, and that's unfortunate because even from the beginning, when the church first was formed, we saw all of those things happening. When, when we see the church first being formed in uh, Acts and there's a problem that breaks out because there's a group of widows uh, who are not, their needs are not being met. Uh, they're being discriminated against. And so they come to the leaders of the church there in Jerusalem and they bring their concerns and uh, the system of deacons is set up so that, that, that no one, uh, no one's needs are, 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 are gone. No one's needs are lacking. The church begins to come together to meet physical needs of everyone within the community. Um, so the distribution of food, people brought their land, they sold their land, they sold whatever they had to make sure that others who didn't have uh, were, would be provided for. So we see early on that this is part of the role of the church, but even before that, we see it in Christ himself and Christ makes the statement, I have come to set the oppressed Free. This is a statement that Jesus himself makes in the fourth chapter of Luke. And so what we uh, um, say at, within our ministry is that if we're going to be followers of Christ and we need to follow Christ and do the things that Christ did, Christ was always looking at the least, the lost left out to bring them back in to a, a relationship, uh, not just with God, but also with community so that they would no longer be excluded, but part of the community. So yes, the church certainly has a role in social issues. Um, and, you know, and that's one of the beautiful things, if I might add about Wheeler Avenue. Wheeler Avenue is a church that was birthed in the midst of the 60s, in the midst of the 60s, uh, founding pastor emeritus, uh, Reverend uh, William Alexander Lawson, um, along with uh, several charter members, started this church in the midst of, of, of so much tumult, but uh, stood, stood hand in hand, and, and, and our church became really a, the Houston chapter for the SCLC, because he was also working at TSU at that time, so working with the students there, and um, church also became a meeting place that there's a, there's a funny story that we, that is told in our church history about the Black Panthers coming in and meeting at the church, and as, as a means of trying to understand what the needs are in the community and how we can meet those, so there's always been a role for the church to, uh, serve and to try to meet those needs. Uh, and certainly our current pastor, Reverend Dr. Marcus D. Cosby, he is carrying that mantle forward, as I said, as we talk about how do we minister to the total person. And we have all kinds of ministries that provide transitional housing, you know, food banks, all those kind of things. But this ministry, this social justice ministry, really takes the stance of looking at systemic issues, systemic issues that are deeper and complex. And um, unfortunately, Rowan, as you know, this is not the type of um, um, not the type of uh, situation where you can come in and do a project and oh, that one's fixed and move on. But this is really kind of boots on the ground that you dig in for the long haul as we seek to dismantle these systems that have been in place and are regulated often for a very long time. So it, it takes uh, a multi-pronged approach in, um, in, in really dismantling the, the, the practices, the, the, um, and, and the practices, the guidelines, the laws, all of those things that would fall into play that create these systems that keep us 
oppressed and not able to experience our fullness of being. You know, when I hear what you're saying, a lot of it has to remind me of the statement, I am because we are, we are because I am, and that we work together. It is a we, it is not an I. And that I really hear in what you guys, what you're saying and what you guys do. And it's so important. And that is biblical as well, just that I am because we are, because it's not about just me. Uh, right. You know, if my brother hurts, I hurt. If my brother needs a coat, I give him, you know, I give him mine. I the, the give and take. And, and in the early church, as you said, they sold everything and right. lived in community. Um, well, you know, and there's a scripture that says specifically that we are to speak up for the rights mm -hmm. of the destitute. And, and to speak up for those who don't have a voice for themselves. And so, uh, it, you know, there, there are many ways to do that. Now, some people are like, well, I'm just not into all of that marching and all of that. Well, you don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. There's certainly a role for that. But when we're looking at how do we dismantle uh, injustice, there are many ways and uh, people can use their talents in different ways to help uh, rectify these situations. Marching, yes, is very important. It brings some awareness and attention to what's going on. But there are other things that have to be done as well as we continue to, you know, as I say, uh, break these systems down. Mm -hmm. So true. Now, I know we got, to, you're here to talk about a conference you guys are having. Yes. So, uh, yes. Tell me about this conference and we'll have, we'll talk some more about just injustice, but let's talk about the conference. I really want to get details. So first off, tell me how you even got the idea to have this. Let's get a little background. Well, at the beginning of the year, we had what we call, uh, what we call a call to action. And at that time, because we believe that this work is not just uh, shall we say, um, a program, right? That this group right here does this program. But because we believe every believer is called to be involved in justice seeking. Um, we really had, we started off the year in January with a, a call to action and Reverend Tracy Blackman came and spoke at that time. And we really talked about how um, we must activate our faith our faith in God, our, our faith in um, the, the, the will of God that, that all should experience shalom and peace in the earth. Um, and, and as we do that, as we put our faith into action, then we begin to move to do this work, right? To, to uh, as you say, consider the circumstances of our brother and our sister and what it is that we can do to improve their plight in life. We, we all are in this together and we should all be trying to shoulder that responsibility together. Well, we did that in January and we thought, well, what else can we do now? Because part of what our group, our, our uh, ministry is founded on is three principles that we advocate, we educate and we elevate. And so when we began to think about this forum, um, we realized that there are so many areas where injustice is experienced. And a lot of times people don't know how I can get involved or where I can get involved or what to do. So we developed this idea of the forum and it will allow us to have a dialogue. Um, we, it is open to the entire community and um, it, it, we will have leading officials and public servants and activists who will come together and talk about the issues, but not just talk about the issues, really give us as participants some key guidance for the ways that we can, um, act, that we can act and make a difference um, in, in, in bringing about change and bringing about transformation. So that is the real goal of this conference is to offer individuals who participate an, an opportunity to be educated on various issues, but also to be empowered and uh, hopefully ignited to go out and uh, work for change. So how is this set up? Will there be breakout rooms for the speakers? Yeah. What is just the uh, platform for the day? 
Well, so you know, we're in COVID, so we still are not meeting in our sanctuary, but this, this forum will be done in a virtual platform. So to participate, you have to go onto the church site and register, first of all, on our, uh, on our church web website, and then uh, you'll be instructed to download what we, what's called the Whova app. But once you download that app, you, it'll, it's just like you're walking into a conference and you'll be able to select which sessions that you would want to attend. And, um, and the wonderful component of it is that there are, because there are concurrent sessions, so you may not, there may be two or three things that you want to see, but you can't see them at the same time. You'll be able to go back and watch the replays of those sessions uh, for up to six months after our uh, form is over with. Yeah, so that's really a, a great thing. But to register for the conference, you need to go to www.wheelerbc.org slash events to register. And then, um, like I said, you'll scroll down the, to the page so you see this banner, this social justice banner behind me, and you can register there. Um, uh, what are some of the far, breakout rooms? What are okay, the different as things? As far as the structure, we're gonna, we're, there'll be three plenaries and we'll start our first plenary session Friday night. And we're, oh, we're, it's such a timely discussion because we're coming up on a, a year of the anniversary, unfortunately, of the George Floyd tragedy. So we are going to be looking, our first panel this discussion will be on policing in Houston one year following George Floyd. Um, the mayor, Sylvester Turner, uh, after the uh, services of Mr. Floyd, uh, the mayor announced a police reform um, that he, some changes. First, he asked for a study to be done, and then in the five that September, he announced a list of changes that would be um, employed going forward. So this conference is going to give us an opportunity to dialogue with uh, folks that are within the law enforcement agency to talk about what has happened, uh, what uh, what is still on the agenda to occur and how are those changes being received and what effect are they having in the community. So it, it will give us a chance as members of the community to really ask and pose those questions and to hear uh, what is going on. In that panel will include the assistant chief of police will be there. Um, also, uh, the constable chief from Precinct 7 will be there. The president of the NAACP, Dr. Bishop of Dixon, excuse me, Dr. James Dixon will be present, but he will, he has also served as part of the mayor's task force uh, on police reform. And then also uh, Ashton Woods, who is a Houston activist with Black Lives Matter will be part of that panel. So we are expecting that we will be starting off with a bang as far as a conversation that evening. And, and we really do want to invite the participants to be there and to ask those questions because it will be followed by a Q&A session. And then um, that's our first plenary. And then on Saturday, we'll have a second plenary that will be on voting, on securing our vote. Because Bronwyn, you know, that we are in a dogfight for this midterm election. And we want to continue to build on the momentum that we've had um, in this past November. However, in Texas, in Texas alone, besides what's going on in, across the United States, but in Texas alone, over 43 pieces of legislation have been introduced that would hinder, constrain, restrict, uh, disallow folks to vote. You know, uh, you, you, we've all been hearing this conversation about Jim Crow 2.0. This is, this is really what we're experiencing right now. And so Saturday morning, uh, Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee will be present, present in the panel to talk about House Bill 1, which has been introduced and uh, they're fighting for right now to as it moves over to the Senate, what that bill entails. Uh, Senator, State Senator Boris Miles will be present. He'll talk about what's going on in the Texas legislature. Uh, also, Chris Hollins will be present, who was the county clerk for Houston 
uh, during the election last year where, you know, he did some phenomenal creative things that allowed more people to have access to vote. Um, but some of those things are part of what's being targeted in these pieces of legislation that's being introduced. So he's going to share his thoughts around uh, what we can do and, and how that we can, um, again, continue to combat what I've kind of called this legislative backlash from great turnout, you know, from, from great turnout. Um, then we'll go into our breakout sessions. We'll have uh, five concurrent breakout sessions after that on a myriad of topics, myriad of topics, including education reform, criminal justice reform, legislative reform, community resource development, um, and, as well as voter engagement. Um, we are really um, you know, when we think about systemic injustice, it impacts pretty much every aspect of life, every aspect sure. of life. And so you could, you know, throw a dart at anything and say, yeah, we can go there or we can go there. So we picked out five, <laughs> we picked out five places to, to, to kind of put some attention and shed some light. Or, and, and, and again, those sessions will be dynamic and interactive. And then we will finish after we have those breakout sessions with uh, our guest speaker, our keynote address given to us by none other than the new freshman senator from Georgia, uh, none other than the Reverend Dr. Raphael Warnock, who is the pastor of the Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta, Georgia. He will be giving our keynote address for the close of the conference and really to kind of send us off uh, further charged in understanding how we all uh, can be involved, need to be involved, must be involved to move this work forward. Awesome. I want to talk a little bit about voting. One of the things at the end of uh, this show every week, we do a call to action. Yes. And one stationary call to action is vote, be an educated voter. Yes. Um, and I know this is something you all will be talking about, but, you know, a lot of people think, oh, I voted in the election, in the presidential election. I feel good about myself. I'll sit down for another four years. But, you know, and you can comment on this, all politics is local. Absolutely. We look at what's going on. We need to look at. You need to even know who your railroad commissioner is because you don't know what that does. Look it up. It impacts your life. You know, we think of, okay, well, I know I'm, I want to vote for governor and senators. Now, if there's a dog catcher who is being voted in, you need to know who that is and how it impacts you. The people that are being elected to any office, it can impact your life, yes. actual life. So it's so important that we are aware, we are educated voters. One of the things I, um, I talked about, we had an election the first weekend, I guess it was week before last here, uh, it was in different parts of the state, you know, had different things to vote for and Dallas area was one of them. Um, there is the League of Women Voters is an organization that puts out a voter's guide. And what they do is they ask every candidate a list, a set of questions. Every candidate in per race is asked the same questions. So you have the opportunity to go and see what they each say. Sometimes it's a long, in this last election, like we had you know, 15 people running for one thing. So you knew it'd be a runoff, but you needed to know who of those 15 you were going to vote for. If right. there are a lot of times when you have propositions on the ballot, they're written yeah. in legalese and you read and you're like, okay, what does that mean? Am I for it or against it? Because if right. it means to Did not I? do something, does that mean I don't want to do it? Does it mean I want to do it? You know, all of that can be very confusing. So if you're looking at, for instance, the League of Women Voters Guide, it will give you information. It will um, help break that down for you. That's just one I use that I'm aware of. But be an educated voter. Go to voter forums and, you know, maybe you can't get out, but that's, I literally sat in my bed reading yeah. through each person. And you know what? I am not married to any party. Right. So I'm going to read everybody. Right. Uh, Jeremiah Wright once did a sermon that said, everybody your color ain't your kind. He preached Maybe. that at Will Avenue one <laughs> Years right. ago. But so don't just say, well, here's a black person on the, on the ballot. I'm going to vote for them. OK, you might be voting for Clarence Thomas. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you being yeah, an so educated voter means you really have to invest some time into that. 
Absolutely. And, and that is one of the things that we really, just like you said, we, we want to encourage people to vote, but to know what, and uh, know what their vote, know what the issues are, but for one, do a complete down ballot voting because the closer, the further down it goes, the closer it is to your door, what's going yes. on and the things that are going to affect your life in an immediate kind of way. So we certainly want to, those school board uh, uh, appointments, all of those things, they are very, very important in our daily life so yes down ballot voting is important but midterm election voting yes. and this midterm is very important we are only on, on, on a national level we're only uh uh there's only a majority in that in a Cong in the senate by a very slight margin um but uh, if, if we're going to hold on to that we're going to need to go out and vote in um in in the midterm, we have a we have a governor, and depending on how you feel about this governor, this is the time that that election will come up, and it's going to be very important that we go out to vote. And so I always say, when it comes to you know, in two years from now, I hope that we haven't forgotten about what happened with the power grid. I, have, I hope we haven't forgotten about the delays in getting the vaccine out. We haven't forgotten about the decrease in funds for Medicaid for our children. I, I hope that we remember um, all of the things that uh, this governor has done and how it has actually impacted our daily lives um, by his decisions as we are going to the po polls and that we will go to the polls and make our voices heard. And that's so true. We have to stop and think what has happened. And we don't realize a lot of times that how our voting can impact that. Going back to the governor, and not just the governor, but those senators, those representatives who are putting forth bills, you're voting for them and not realizing that, oh, they can, that's impacting my health. Yeah, that's right. impacting your Medicaid. How is right. it impacting your mental health when they cut benefits for mental health, cut exactly. programs for mental health? Exactly. The people you're voting in have a direct correlation to your life. And I think Absolutely. as um, voters, we have to be educated enough to know that, oh, I've got to think about every little thing that, um, that might impact my life. How might a legislator do that? Exactly, exactly. And, and, and so that's part of uh, one of the pieces in this conference that I'm excited about, we're going to have one of those breakout sessions is a legislative boot camp um, that not only uh, do we have information about voting, but how do you even begin to uh, stay in contact with your representatives? How do you find out uh, what it is that they're voting on, how they're voting? How do you make your concerns known and heard to your representatives? Because the truth of the matter is that they are there to represent the people. And so they are to represent the will of the people. So it's very important for us to make our wills known to our representatives and hold them accountable to those things. So yeah, it's, it's to be a voter is a wonderful right. It's a, it's, a, it's a wonderful right that we have, but it's also an, an incredible responsibility. It's an incredible responsibility that um, impacts our ability to live in this country uh, and, and to have and experience justice in, in our, um, our everyday existence, our everyday existence. Now, this conference is focused in the Houston area. You have Houston um, officials. For someone who's not, because I am in the DFW area, for mm -hmm. someone who's not in Houston, and I have people listening across the country, how can they benefit from attending this conference? Well, again, I think that uh, much of the information that's going to be gained or shared um, is transferable. Um, from one community to the next. I, I, again, particularly our conversation on voting is an issue that is being faced across the nation. Uh, and we'll be able to hear uh, from a, a, a national perspective, right, how, how we can make changes and be involved. I also think that as we 
begin to explore even in the breakout sessions uh, and listening to the folks, the information that they're sharing. Again, it's, uh, it's an opportunity that you can take that information and utilize it in your communities and say, okay, oh, I, this is something that they're doing in Houston. Let's see how we can implement this uh, in New York or in Virginia or in Florida or California. You, uh, it's just, I, I had the opportunity to sit in on a conversation with the police department in New York uh, that was talking to a group of female uh, women preachers. Mm. And I thought to myself, now this is very interesting. Let me begin to see what it is that I can take back from this conversation and we can replicate this same thing in the Houston, the, in, in the Houston area as we were trying to build those relationships and, 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 and again, holding our public officials accountable for um, how it is that they are serving us um, within our communities. So I absolutely believe that independent of where you live, this conference is gonna have something for you that you can take back and you utilize. And that is true because the issues that we face of injustice are not um, unique to Houston, but I just wanted to make sure, you know, my listeners understood it is not just a Houston conference. Now, that yeah. is one of the good things that has come out of um, our life, our virtual life, is that yeah. you can reach so many more people. And this is knowing about voting and understanding voting, that is, that's going to be not just to Houston, that really is nationwide. You know, yes. some states are more oppressive or becoming more oppressive, but if you're not in a state that's oppressive, you wanna make sure they don't become oppressive. Right. Um, so what we need to do to vote, what we need to do to understand policing, it doesn't matter, we can just, you know, turn on the news and you know, there are issues everywhere, small town USA to major city USA. So the issues that are going to be addressed really are universal. You know, they, they can hit wherever you are in this country. It's something you can learn um, how to better your community because it is about better bettering or making better your community. Um, what else would you like to tell us about um, your ministry, your program? Well, with regard to this, this conference, not only is this conference for adults, we have things um, for some programs for uh, children as well as awesome. youth. We have um, for our third through fifth graders, um, we have a session called Blessed are the Peacemakers, so that as young children that they can begin to understand these principles around justice and how it is even, even experienced in their worlds because um, the same type of systems that become oppressive start out with individuals who are bullies as children. So what does that mean and how can they learn to do that? We also will have uh, some special program for our teens and uh, middle school and high schoolers uh, because we believe that young voices matter. Young voices have always been out there in the forefront helping to make this nation move to a more just uh, nation. And so we're gonna really be talking to them about what it is, how, how they're understanding what, where we are in the world right now and the, the vision that we see, but to also empower them so that they know that they, they can too make a difference even at the age that they are right now. So um, something for everyone, something for everyone. But I, I strongly encourage that folks go and really uh, sign up soon because our spaces are limited even though we're virtual. So we are asking that people go and register uh, today now and uh, get your spot, get your seat so that you can be in the virtual space with us. We'll also have a, a, a couple of um, community partners that will be present with us um, kind of in our uh, virtual exhibit hall that people can go and meet and find out what these organizations are doing and how they can become a part of those organizations and the work that they're um, that they have going on. So just really a lot, a lot, a lot that is involved in this short two day conference, but we try to pack it in and um, hopefully again, people will leave equipped and inspired to find the ways where they can go and be engaged in this work. 
Is there a cost to the conference? There is no cost. There is no cost. Uh, you will be able to access, uh, like I said, this information for up to six months. Um, using the app that it's in, you will be able to even contact um, individuals through that app if you're wanting to make some networking connections with some folks that you might meet in the sessions or the speakers. Um, it's, uh, it, but again, it, it is virtual, so you will need to download that, the app uh, to sign in and to be present um, in, in that virtual space. Awesome. Um, as we wind down, I do want to encourage you to attend this conference. As you know, I believe we should be politically aware. We're going to have a separate show just on voting. And I'll get to tell you my um, personal family history about voting and how um, one of my relatives was instrumental, Reverend A.A. A. Lucas, in getting um, Black people the right to vote in Texas or be a part of the Democratic um democratic process. Awesome That's case, great. and I can't wait to share it. Um, but I really um, have been big on voting. That's why my father was, uh, you know, very big in voting. It was, it's been a family history. We vote. When we were little, right. we went, you know, we went to the polls. I, I took my child to the polls with me, you know, every year. Really? We're going, it's time to go vote. No, you can't vote, but now he's 18. You can. Um, and you are, you get, so it's just ingrained in them. So I encourage you, take your children. Uh, but we need to be. I always took my daughter as well. She yes. always came to me until it was her turn to vote, you know, and, and, and I can tell you, there was a great sense of pride in being at the polls with her, her very first time that she voted. It was, and, and to see how seriously she was taking it. She actually, and in fact, in this election, she actually came back from um, Louisiana so that she could vote at home. She wanted to make sure that her vote was going to count and uh, she would have an opportunity to cast her vote because there were some, you know, discrepancies about what was going to happen with the mail-in ballots and all of that. So right. uh, she actually requested a ballot and never received it. So she, uh, she made the point of coming home and voting, but that's how seriously um, as well that we take voting in, in, yes. in this house. <laughs> I understand. Um, and so, and we look at, you know, we want police reform, so we need to be able to be able to talk to our, our, the right people about it. So that's something you can gain from this conference. So as we begin to wind down for the day, um, and in this session, I want to remind you um, to, um, I want to remind you to listen to our call to action. And I'm not sure if I, well, not sure if I actually put the right screen up, but I will share our call to action. And it is, my first point on our call to action this week is share the information about this conference. Um, and I'll remind you, it is www.wheeler, W-H-E-E-L-E-R, B-C, dot org slash events the second point is do oh, yeah. something uh, there it is and the date <laughs> of the conference is may 21st through may 22nd and what time does it begin on friday evening we start at 7 a.m i mean excuse me 7 p.m 7 p.m friday evening um and then on saturday morning we'll begin at 9 a.m and our sec thank you. Our second point is do something. If you fail at it, try something else. But please do something that can make your community better. Stay politically aware. That's going to be a point probably forever. And although the CDC is uh, today has eased up masking restrictions, stay safe. If you feel like you need your mask, leave it on mind staying on a little while longer, but be able to be safe and do what you need to to keep yourself safe. Um, would you like to have a final word? Well, I only need to say, first of all, thank you again 
for allowing us this opportunity to come and share with your listeners. I hope that you all will seriously consider uh, participating in this conference, but more importantly, I hope that you all will uh, think about the ways that you can make a difference in the world. We talk always about being the change that we want to see in the world, but there really is an opportunity across myriads of, um, of, of dimensions where we can make a difference if we use our voice to do that. And so I am excited about uh, all of those who will participate in this conference. I know, I know, I know that you will be blessed by the information that you gained and uh, not just information for information's sake, but information to be utilized. We, you know, the word says that faith without works is dead is dead. So when we activate our faith in doing this work, we can accomplish great things, bringing God our couple of loaves and fishes, and he will multiply the impact of the work that we're doing. So I just want to encourage all of you, and thank you again, Bronwyn, for um, allowing me to share about this event with all of your viewers. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming, um, and I hope and I hope just the knowledge you gave tonight will inspire others to come. Those who can't come to the event, it will inspire them to make a difference in their community. I'm Bronwyn Lucas, your host of Thinking Thursday. I am so glad you joined tonight. I am with ABLE Counseling and Consulting, where we affirm, build, lead, and empower you. If you find yourself in need of a therapist, I am here to help. And remember, it is my belief that mental health is health. So take care of your mental health and take care of your health. I look forward to seeing you um, next week. And we will be talking about some mental health issues next week and just what that means. So I look forward to seeing you again and have a great week. Mm -hmm.